Hello cheap skaters, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm canning corned beef this afternoon, it's Friday afternoon and I'm canning corned beef on a Friday because it was IGA market day and it was just $6.99 a kilo. That is a stock up price. We love corned beef. We eat a lot of corned beef. We have it hot with mustard sauce and mashed potatoes and peas and carrots and sometimes cabbage. We have it in my corned beef pie that I make. We have it shredded on sandwiches. I put it into fritters. We've even been known to eat it straight from the jar. It's that good. So I couldn't resist. Now I could only get three pieces. One, two, three. They're quite small. So I've got 1.2, 1.6. Is 2.8, 3.8, 4.3 kilos of corned beef to do here. I've got six jars over here ready, six quart jars all cleaned and ready to be filled. I've got six because I might be able to fill six, maybe five, I'm thinking, but that's still a good. Um, stock to add to my pantry shelves today so I need to get cracking I'm going to pause while I open it and cut it all up because you don't need to see me doing that and wait for the 10 minutes or so while that happens and I'll be back when it's ready to go into the jars right I've chopped up two pieces brought you back so I can see so you can see what I'm doing I will say, let me preface this by saying, canning corned beef is now considered a rebel canning practice. Like about maybe 18 months ago, it was decided that corned beef perhaps wasn't safe to can because it's a denser meat having been corned. Well, I've been canning corned beef as long as I've been canning. So I did a little looking into it and they decided because it is a much denser, it's grainier, thicker, solider, whatever, it's not as squishy as the raw meat, that if you can it in big chunks, the heat can't, get through into the center of it like it needs to to maintain that temperature under pressure to kill whatever's in it so good thing i don't cut into big chunks they're about mm, two and a half centimeters square maybe if i could do it in bigger chunks i would but because they hold this shape better in the canner but you know what? We enjoy it anyway, so little chunks it is. So I've kept on doing it. It is entirely up to you whether you choose to, to be a rebel and can your corned beef or just freeze it. Either way, it's still nice to have. So there we go. It's the last couple of pieces, then we'll fill the jars. It's quite a nice pile, so I might get six jars out of it which would be quite nice okay i am going to use my wide mouth funnel simply because i have to drop the chunks in i'm just going to drop them in i am not squishing them down and we are not adding liquid to this um, jar we are just going to squish them in or put them in, not squish them. A couple more I think will go in there quite nicely. And we leave the inch headspace. The meat will make its own broth, juice, gravy, chew, whatever you want to call it, as it cooks. So you don't need to add anything to it. And honestly, 
this is the easiest way to get it done it's even faster than the slow cooker and it's shelf stable bearing in mind that's a bit thick um, bearing in mind that it is rebel canning now one of these quart jars is usually enough for the four of us sometimes five of us for a meal so might need to get more jars maybe I'll put another piece in there around we go now this is shelf stable once it comes out of the canner it's been processed done its thing the can has worked its hot steam magic hot pressure steam magic and it's cooled down the jars are washed they're dated put in the pantry it's good for two years at least two years on the pantry shelf now you might have noticed that I've trimmed off most of the fat I don't like fatty meat fatty meat bothers me a little one more in there one more in there one more in there or maybe two more in there get it filled okay so this will be so good for quick meals on the pantry shelf so so good now the bigger the chunks of course the fewer you will get in the jar it's just the way things are so if you want more in your jar cut them smaller I'm going to take that one out oh, no that's all right cut them a bit smaller remember I'm not packing them down tight I'm just pushing them in there's still room in there for them to fill up their broth and yes six jars I'll get six jars out of this so out of those three pieces at four and a half might hmm, take a piece out of there might take a piece can't I get it with my fingers out of there piece out of there okay that's fat and gristle all right let me get rid of these because they're going to be in my way while I wipe the rims now paper towel courtesy of Hannah because I don't um, buy paper towel paper towel dipped in vinegar over the rims now don't skip this step don't skip this step give them a good wipe even using the funnel there's a chance there's going to be dust or grease or something on those rims it also gives you a chance to check that they are intact no um, chips out of them or anything like that they're good to go now I'm going to wash my hands because they're all icky and we'll be back to put the flats on it won't take long Okay, the flats, I'm using, I'm still using ball and the modern day message is you do not need to heat them anymore, so I haven't. They're going on the lids. Now, you might have noticed these are narrow mouthed, regular mouth lids, because all my wide mouth jars are full. Finger tight with the bands. Do not and make them really tight. Just finger tight. So the lid doesn't move, but it's not so tight that the steam and pressure that builds up in the jar can't escape because it needs to escape. If it can't escape, it'll either break the jar or pop the lid and buckle the ring. Okay, so just finger tight. Don't crank it really tight. Now, 
cold meat in cold jars means cold canner. So give me a moment, I'll flip you up and you can see how we put the canner together. Won't be a moment. Okay, canners here on the stove. I use my front burner because that's the one that has the sweet spot where I can keep it at the right jiggle. Um, cold water in the canner, rack in the bottom, cold water, three quarts goes in the bottom of my pressure canner. And then in the jars go cold food, cold jars, cold water, cold canner. Okay. And they will all fit nicely. All righty, I've checked the lid, I've made sure everything is working properly, all the vents are clear, so it's going on. Okay, and I'm going to turn the heat on. I'm going to wait until I get a steady stream of steam coming out of this valve here. Can you see it? Let me bring you in a bit closer. That better steady stream of steam now a steady stream of steam means a steady it means whoosh, constant steady stream of steam not whoosh, whoosh. so wait till it's a steady stream of steam set your timer for 10 minutes when that's done i'll come back we'll put the weight on and let it come up to pressure so here goes stove on there we go And I'll be back in a few minutes. Right. I've put the jiggler on. It vented for 10 minutes. I set my time. I vented for 10 minutes, put the jiggler on. And now we're going to wait for it to come up to pressure. It'll start to do its little cooler dance. And once it comes up to pressure and starts doing its dance, I will set the timer for 90 minutes because I've got quart jars in there. If you are doing pint jars, it's 75 minutes. I'll be back when I set the timer. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I got busy and I forgot to come back and show you. But pressure canner came up to pressure. Set my timer for put my be on pressure came up to 11 pounds which is what's needed for my elevation set the timer for 90 minutes when it went off i turned it off let it come back down to zero i don't know if you can see this zero the pressure naturally nothing left so that can come off it's been sitting for a few minutes with the lid. There we go. Woohoo! And now I'm going to let it rest for a couple of minutes. Maybe a little bit of siphoning in there from where I can see. Maybe not too much, but it looks wonderful. Just let it rest in there to come down just for a few minutes. It just stops thermal shock when I take it out of the steaming, boiling hot canner because it is still boiling and put it onto my board. I want it to be, I should crouch down so you can see me. I want it to be, you know, nice and smooth. I don't want any broken jars. So I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll take it out of the canner. Okay, it's been a few minutes, so let's take the jars out and we'll see how they go. Oh, there we go. Now you can see there's been quite a bit of shrinkage. That's okay, I didn't pack them full. But you'll also notice that the meat actually made a lot of its own broth. 
so it still looks good you can see the bubbles that's how hot it still is put them on the rack there have been a couple of pings already which is music to my ears because that means they've sealed now and they all look wonderful look just look amazing so they're going onto the board here to cool naturally overnight and then tomorrow I will drop you down so you can see let me turn you around and slowly drop you down so you can see these beautiful jars of how cute is that how nice is that all that wonderful corned beef to go on our pantry shelf so i've got six quarts that's six meals of corned beef done in an afternoon and it was really only about 20 minutes hand on hands on time to get it all done so if you're worried about pressure canning being difficult it's not if you're worried about it being time consuming the canner does most of the work and takes up most of the time hands-on for you or me not much at all anyway that's how I pressure can corned beef when I get it on a super great deal like I did today for $6.99 a kilo alrighty if you like the video I would be absolutely thrilled if you could give us a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do hit that subscribe button those two things help our channel grow they make it easier for people to find us and of course the easier it is for people to find us the easier it is for us to tell them that it is absolutely okay to live life debt free cashed up and laughing and possible even in 2024 i'll be back very soon with another cheapskates club video showing you how to live life debt free cashed up and laughing but until then happy cheapskating everyone